So in 1966, you got a couple of cab drivers named Fred Bartoli and Sam Levine. And they're sick of driving cabs for a living in rush hour traffic. They get the idea, this deep dish pizza seems to be catching on here in Chicago. It's gonna be a thing for years to come. Problem is, again, they have no idea how to make deep dish pizza. The way the pizza was made at Pizzeria Uno was always considered kind of a secret. When there was a new establishment in Gino's East, well, Pizzeria Uno lost their master pizza maker, Alice Mae Redmond. Oh, it's getting juicy again. In the restaurant business in general, taking people from one restaurant to the next is a pretty common thing to do. Jordan Himmel from Gino's East. And I think that they were able to sort of explain to her that this was an important thing and that she needed to come with them to start this new offshoot of deep dish pizza. When you put it that way, Jordan, it almost sounds like a noble pursuit. A couple of guys named Fred Bartoli and Sam Levine hide outside of Pizzeria Uno, and they wait for Alice Mae Redmond, who was like the head chef there at the time. They find her, basically make her an offer that she couldn't refuse, and then bring her on board to Gino's East Pizzeria. The plot thickens. I'm sure it was money. Deborah Frank, also from Gino's East. I'm sure it was pay. I'm sure that they made promises to her so that she would come over and help them build their own empire, which they did. Putting all that poaching business aside, sounds like it might have been a win for both Alice May and Gino's East. People know the name of Sam Levine and Fred Bartoli really well because they were the owners, right? And, and Alice May, she never thought she was going to leave Pizzeria Uno to begin with, but then to be given this chance to put her spin on it, make this pizza the way she wanted to make it, and uh, you know, employ her whole family there, it, it was a great opportunity for her. Lovely thought, John. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Uno, trouble was a brewing between some longtime employees. Tim Samuelson catches us up. Rudy Melnati Sr. was the manager of Pizzeria Uno and Due for a long time. And he also had a son who had worked for Ricardo and had worked as a bartender, and that is Lou Melnati. Familiar name. I think I heard of the guy. Lou and, and Sr. worked for years at Uno's and Due's and in many ways ran the place. Lou believed that he had some rights to the restaurant and wanted to know what would happen when Ike Sewell passed away. And Ike Sewell said, nothing, you're not a partner. Cold, Ike, very cold. So he's about 40 years old or so. He's been there about 22 years at this point. So, you know, he did a little bit of soul searching, decided to leave. And in 1971, on St. Patrick's Day, he decided to open up Lou Malnati's in Lincolnwood, which is a predominantly Jewish neighborhood. It was an Italian restaurant in a Jewish neighborhood, and it happened to be on an Irish holiday, St. Patrick's Day. Lou's son, Mark. The first day at lunch, right through this wall behind me, came a Cadillac sedan de Ville and broke a girl's arm who was sitting in this booth having her first pizza at Malnati's. It was a wild day. But all was not rosy and the Malnati family. Well, I think when Lou left uh, Pizza Ray, you know, he thought to himself, yeah, it's in my rearview mirror. I'm not thinking of anything about this anymore. I'm moving on. What's interesting to me is that Lou didn't bring his father, Rudy Malnati Sr., with him to Lou Malnati's. My father-in-law didn't think he was going to make it. Lou's wife, Jean Malnati Miller. We opened and people were standing outside waiting to get in. And from that day on, it was just it was up for grabs. And the public continued to eat it up. Pun intended. I think the way it goes is people grow up in a neighborhood and they grow up eating a certain kind of pizza, whether it's you know Uno or Gino or you know one of the others. And as their palate becomes a little more sophisticated, they seem to all work their way to the place where they're eating Malnati's. I can't explain it. <laughs>